here, we're gonna talk about the last thing here and we're gonna talk about the dot product. And it's applications to work. The dot product beautifully describes work and it does it in a very elegant way. So let's look at this here. So the first thing that I wanna do here is that I wanna remind you about vectors here, just a brief reminder. So what we wanna do here is that, so remember that if I have a vector, let's call it A, it has two components, AX, AY, and I can write this as a dot product. And what that means here is that if I have AX I hat plus AY J hat, I have a vector that I can write in terms of unit vectors. And then of course here, if I want more details about this, I could go in and I can get the magnitude of this vector or I could get the angle like this here. So now let's go in and define what a dot product is here. So this is a very simple definition. Of course, there's a more complete definition, which we're not interested in here, is that it says this here, that the dot product between two vectors. And in this case, the two vectors are gonna be A and B is then gonna be this here. It's gonna be A dotted with B. And you're gonna see here that this is written as the magnitude of A, the magnitude of B cosine times the angle between the vectors a, b, or it's more commonly written like this. So what it's really saying here is that I have two vectors. I have a vector a, and I have a vector b. And all I know is that there's this angle theta between a and b. That's the definition of the dot product right there. It's, it's, it's a mathematical thing. And so what I wanna do here is that I wanna start to look at this thing and try to give you a sense of what this physically means here. And why is this so good at really telling us about these things here. And the way I'm gonna do this here is that I'm gonna go over a couple of things here. So one of the things that I wanna do here is that I wanna look at two of its properties. So I wanna look at its properties. And so the first property that I wanna to talk to you about is that what does the dot product mean? The dot product Um, physically projects the length of B onto the length of A. And let me give you a sense of this thing here. So what I wanna do here is set, so the projection angle is theta here. So let's go look at, let's look at uh, a couple of situations here. So the first one that I wanna do here is that I'm, I wanna look at what happens if theta is equal to 90 degrees. So picture 
the following thing here. So that means that A and B are perpendicular to each other. So if I look at A, let's say it's three squares. That's A right there. And so what I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna take my B and I'm gonna look at this guy right here. So the first thing that you see here, of course, is that these guys are at a right angle, 90 degrees. Now, what I want you to do here is that imagine that you project the vector B onto A, right? So what is the projection of B onto A? Well, what it is here is that, so if you look at this thing here, what you're gonna get here is that you're gonna get what? You're gonna get a point. The projection is a point. But wait a minute, points have no dimension. So if they have no dimensions, what you're seeing here is that there is zero projection, right? Lines don't have a width, points don't have a width. So the projection is zero at this point right here. So there's no projection. So what does the dot product mathematically do? So if I look at A dot B, then I'm gonna have the magnitude of A and B. And of course, I'm gonna have cosine of 90, which of course gives us zero. So both pictures give us the exact same result. Now let's look at the other one now. So if I look at the other angle here, let's say that theta in this case is zero degrees. So if it's zero degrees here, then that means that A and B must be parallel to each other. So let's go draw them out here. So here's my vector A. Now, what I'm gonna do here is instead of putting it right on top, I'm gonna just raise it up above, but the angle is still the same here. And what you're gonna see here is that, what am I going to do? I gotta take B and what do I gotta do? I gotta project it onto here. So when you look at the projection length, you could see here that the projection length here is the whole length. In other words, you get maximum projection of B onto A. What does the dot product tell us? Well, if I look at the dot product, it's gotta be AB, of course, cosine of zero, which then gives us AB because this guy is a max at zero degrees. So the, the last one, just to make sure that we're nice and clear about this, is that I could pick an angle that's 180 degrees. So if you do that, what you're actually seeing in this case here is that now I have my vector A and my vector B is now pointed in the opposite direction. Let's actually move it off to, just to the side here. And when I project it, note, because it's pointing in the opposite direction, I'm still getting maximum projection, but in the opposite direction. So I'm getting maximum projection, but in the opposite direction. So as a result, this gives me, in essence, the lowest possible value. Why does it give me the lowest possible value? Well, it's a negative number. If you look at the 90 degrees, that's zero. 
if you look at zero degrees, that's maximum because it's in the positive direction. So a negative projection is gonna give me one in the opposite direction, a negative number smaller than zero. So when I look at the dot product between these guys, I'm gonna get cosine of 180, which then of course is minus AB. So the dot product physically projects the length of one vector onto the length of another vector. So the second thing that I wanna talk about here is that I wanna talk about the role of unit vectors here. Okay, so what is the role of unit vectors? So let me do this just to make sure that, okay, so let me move up. And what you're finding here is that when you look at unit vectors, right? Unit vectors are very special, just like every one of you guys are. And what you find here is that dot, um, the dot product between unit vectors is going to be very similar to what we thought before. So think about it. If I set up a coordinate system, let's say this is y and this is x, one of the things that we said here is that a unit vector, let's say this is the unit vector i hat in the x direction, let's say that this unit vector is the j direction, so then I could then come in and just say what? Well, if I dot I hat and I hat, so let's say that I dot I hat and I hat, well, what does that mean? That means I have a unit vector, I hat, a unit vector, I hat, and you could see that you're gonna get maximum projection. So then that means here that then I'm gonna get what? That I'm gonna get I hat dotted with I hat is then the magnitude of I hat times cosine of zero, but the magnitude of all unit vectors is one. So of course, that's gonna give me one. I get maximum projection. On the other hand, you could imagine that I try to dot I hat with J hat. When you look at this guy, of course you're seeing that I'm gonna get zero projection. So then I could immediately state then that I dotted with J is gonna give me zero. So, so I have I hat I hat as well as J hat J hat when they're dotted, I'm gonna get one because I get maximum projection. But when I dot the opposite, with the opposite, I get zero. So the question is that, how do we set up a dot product between two vectors? So the dot product between two vectors is then gonna be A dot it with B. And then my A vector, of course, is AX I hat plus AY J hat. And then I'm going to have a dot product between BX and BY that looks like this here. So what you're seeing here is that if I write this out, you're seeing that, look at my first term. I'm going to dot x with bx, so I'm going to collect i hats, and I'm going to see here that I'm going to get ax, bx, i, dot it with i, and so this is how I'm getting this term, and then the other term that I'm going to focus on, I'm going to focus on the j's here, and then you're going to see here that I'm going to get plus ay, by, j, J, and you could see that 
you get these terms. So now what I'm going to deal with is I'm going to deal with the cross terms. But if I deal with the cross terms, then I'm going to get what? I'm going to get AX going with BY. So then I'm going to get AX, BY, and I'm going to get I dotted with J. And then I'm going to do AY, BX, which then is going to be J dotted with I. And immediately we can see here that if I have I dotted with J or J dotted with I, this is immediately zero, but I dot I is one, J dot J is one. So the result is that when I do a dot product, A dot B, what does it do? It picks out the components along the X direction and multiplies them. And it picks out the Y components and it multiplies them. So you're seeing here is that the dot product between two vectors looks like this here. And so if I have, if this is true, then I could now come in and I can apply this idea to work. And so when I look at work here, you could imagine that if I have a constant force where there's no integrations, then it tells me here is that the work is then going to be F dotted with the displacement. So then this of course tells me that it's F of X, I, F of Y, J. And then my displacement is going to be delta X in the I direction plus delta Y in the J direction. And the dot product does what? It picks out only the parallel or anti-parallel components because we know that this guy has to be like this here. So it picks out those components. So if I come in and I write these details here, I could say that in summary, the dot product only picks out the parallel slash anti-parallel components because it already knows, right? It already zeroes out the perpendicular components. It zeroes out the perpendicular components automatically because it knows that I hat dotted to J hat is zero. And that's why the dot product is such a great, you know, detail for working with work here. So to just stress the idea